Shalom everyone, this is Shlomo Katz, you're listening to the Soul of Israel on thelandofisrael.com, on the Land of Israel Network. Boker Tov, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whatever time you're listening and tuning in to us as we share our hearts here from the rolling hills of Judea. As our dear Chaver of blessed memory, Ari Fold, used to refer to this beautiful area in which we have the privilege of waking up to and going to sleep to and having our eyes glued to all day long. Can't lie to you all, it's been a very stressful few days here. Israel, southern Israel, is under constant attack, as I'm sure you're all aware of. And even as we're recording right now, our red alert apps have keep on going on, letting us know of more places where our enemies are trying to inflict their wrath and their anger. But really, that's not even their anger, it's their simple hatred. And uh, God Almighty has shown us many, many miracles in the last few days. But we need all our prayers to just be upped by a few notches. So we're just going to open up with making a little short prayer right now. So please pray, pray, pray with me right now. Shomer Yisrael, Shmar She'erit Yisrael, Ve'al Yovad Yisrael, Ha'omrim Shma Yisrael. Guardian of Israel, guard the remainder of Am Yisrael. And don't let anyone from Am Yisrael be lost, those that say Shema Yisrael. So we're going to say together right now the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. I want to jump right into our Parsha. Our Parsha helps us deal with a lot of issues that seem to us to be so heavy. And when we tune into Yaakov Avinu's energy, we realize that many of the trials and tribulations we go through in our life don't have to be as heavy as they seem. A common theme throughout the parshiot that we have, throughout the parshas that we have, um, is the concept of a well, a be'er. We see that by, by Yitzchak, we see it by Avram, we see it by Yitzchak, and we see it by Yaakov, we see it by Rivka. It comes up a lot. So I wanted to introduce you all to uh, our agricultural uh, expert, the, the, the Judean agricultural expert who's joining us on today's show. Sorry, it's 128 days till Purim, and I really need Purim energy today. <laughs> Please say Shalom Aleichem to Rabbi Arya Bramowitz. Shalom Aleichem. Are there any Be'erot in your area? The truth is we just dug one. You dug a well. Yes. Well, I don't know if it's qualified as a well if we didn't hit water. So right now it's just a pit. So you but, created a pit, but let's call that digging a well. Yes, yes. I mean, we dug a well. There's just no water yet. That we could go a little deeper. But uh, that's, you know, what Yitzchak dug up his father's right, wells. And so right. we're trying to dig up dig up the wells of, wow. of your. I'm sure that, that they're, I'm sure you're, first of all, you will hit water. Bezrat Hashem. Uh, so, you, so you know what it's like, this Be'erot. In Hebrew, the word Be'er is very interesting. It means well. And it also means to explain, Leva'er. To explain, biur, oh, wow. is a deeper explanation. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. If the Torah is parable to water, so be'er means to explain the Torah, right? To explain what's going on. So when we look at the life of Yitzchak Avinu, Yitzchak, it says that he redug the wells of his father. Why did he have to redig it? Who clogged them? The Plishtim. Interesting. The Philistines. In Hasidus, it says, take a Deep look at the word in the Torah describing the work that the Philistines did. It says, Sitmum Plishtim, which means they clogged the Be'erot, the wellsprings, the Be'erot of Avram Avinu. So how, do, how, do we, how do our Be'erot, meaning our explanations of Torah, get clogged up in today's day and age? When the voices of evil come and say, Stam, Sitmum. They made it into Stam, which means it, it makes us look at the Torah of our last generation, and the new generation comes with this spirit of heresy that says, ah, it's Stam. It's nothing, not, nothing too deep. Don't get too excited about the, uh, the depth and explanations of Torah the previous generation had. That's what Yitzchak had to fight. He had to redig the wells, the wells of Torah, the wells of water, that the plishtim clogged, which means they made it into stam. Stam, in Hebrew, means eh, it's nothing. But it's connected to the word satum, 
which means clogged. They clogged up that which made us feel special. But Yaakov Avinu's relationship with the Be'er is very different. When he comes and he meets his soulmate in our parsha, his soulmate Rachel, you know, it's what a movie said, that what, 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 a, what, a, what, a, what a, a script from Hollywood, the way the Torah describes the meeting between Jacob and Rachel, Yaakov and Rachel. It's a gorgeous meeting. And the heroism is just, uh, it's, it's mamash, 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 a chidush in, the, like, in our lives in the Torah. Yaakov Avinu comes, he sees there are all these uh, people that are having trouble lifting the rock that's over the be'er, right? Ve'a'even ha'gdola al pi'a be'er. Yaakov Avinu comes, and remember we said that the be'er, the well of water, is also the explanations of the Torah. And the dark forces of the world try to cover up the explanations of the Torah, the deeper dimensions of I the mean, Torah. I mean, when you said Stam, it made me think about like, ah, Stam, like just blow it off the ultimate, just yeah. dismissal yeah. in dismissal. a scoffing way. Yaakov Avinu comes now and he's, he's, he's the next generation. And he's like, okay, my father Yitzchak was able to dismiss those that dismissed the importance of the Torah. So what, how are they fighting against the wellsprings of Torah now? Now there's a huge Evan on the Be'er. They didn't clog it. They denied access to the Be'er, to the water, which is even harder. You see, if I know something is there, but I have no access to it, it kills me. If someone tells me, ah, it's not so special, it doesn't bother me so much. But when I know something is there, but I'm denied access, that's when I lose my mind. Yaakov Avinu comes to a Be'er, there's water there, but what's the problem? There's a huge, huge rock that's covering it. But what does he do in the name of love, in the name of everything that he believes in? He's able, and we don't really understand this, there's a lot of Midrashim talking about the weight of that Evan. But he comes and he knows if beneath this is the ability for me to connect to Hashem in a deeper way, that which might seem so hard for me is nothing for me. And Yaakov Avinu gets rid of that rock. He removes the rock off of the Be'er, thus providing us an opportunity to connect, an opportunity to delve deeper, deeper into the Torah, and the Be'erot continue to play a role in our lives. But since this Parsha is the Parsha of really of soulmates, it's Yaakov Avinu meeting Rachel, having to love and wait for her for 14 years, marrying her sister in the meantime, we see over here that the role that the Be'er plays the role that the rock plays is tremendous. Where else, Ari, do we have the concept of avanim, of, of, of evan in the Parsha? It's the beginning of the Parsha. Oh, Yaakov Avinu. He le- lies his head on the, on the stone stones. Correct. You see, nothing in the Torah is stam. The concept of a rock in our, fa- in our, in our tradition is very interesting. Evan is made out of two words, av and ben. Evan is a linking word. It links two generations. By the stone that was over the Be'er, Yaakov Avinu needed to remove the stone in order so that we would have access to the continuation and flow of Torah that our parents gave us. But the stone can also provide for us a magen. Magen is a shield. shield. Thank you very much. It says that the stones were fighting amongst themselves. Upon who will Yaakov, will Jacob rest his head when he takes his shluf, his famous shluf, in the beginning of the parsha, the sleep in which he sees the, the imagery of the, he has the dream of the ladder and the angels going up and down. And all the stones were, were fighting over the privilege. Who will, he, who, who will he lay on, rest on? Eventually what happens is they became one big stone, and Jacob finds shelter in the fact that he was able to protect his head in that area over there. And our sages teach us a very, very, very deep teaching, an incredible teaching. Our sages ask us the following. If Jacob was worried that he should be protected, why did he only care about his head? That The stone should surround his head. What about the rest of his body? So our sages teach us that when a person understands that if they're sinking, as long as their head is still afloat, they have a chance to get out. Jacob using the stones for protection taught us Jewish people that no matter how deep you sink into an assimilated world, 
into a world filled with snakes and scorpions that might come and bite you in different areas of your body if your head, if your mind is still connected to knowing that it's only the Ribbona Shlolem that's running the show, you can then have access to lift the largest rocks and stones in the world off of anything. Meaning, when I was a little kid, I'll never forget this, I once saw a car flip over during carpool, and a mother was in that car, and her little children were stuck in the car. The mother began to flip the car back over, she be- I mean, I don't even, I don't remember if she succeeded or not, but what I know is that who in their logical mind goes to such a place of thinking that they can flip over a car? Well, if the most precious thing in the world is in that car, nothing seems like too big of a of a trial or a tribulation or a test. What Jacob was basically doing in the beginning of our Pasha was he was giving us the koach to keep our heads afloat no matter what. The rocks is what helped us, protect us. And then we use that same concept of a rock. A rock is usually that thing that covers up. It's a, you know, mountains are rocks. Uh, uh, rocks are mountains. It's the most solid thing. It's that which seems like it's the biggest divider between us and who we really are. But when we're really tuned in, in the spirit of Jacob, not only can we lift rocks off of wells, we could also wait for years and years and years. Time becomes like a rock. Time becomes so heavy. Time becomes so consuming. But when I know that what I'm working for is worth it, then all those years that seem like rock years, that seem like it it never ends, when I reach that which I longed for, it doesn't feel like anything. That's the way Bar Parsha continues. When he waited and he waited and he waited and he finally reached Rachel after 14 years, and he finally got to her, it says he loved her, and those days seemed like nothing. Yaakov Avinu, his second name is Yisrael, he gives us the ability to wait. He gives us the ability to long. He gives us the ability to have patience. He gives us the strength to keep our head afloat. He gives us the physical strength to remove massive boulders when they need to be removed. Yaakov Avinu is still playing a massive role in Am Yisrael till today. And his love for Rachel was one of the greatest things that really brought out the Koach to keep on going no matter what. I feel like right now Am Yisrael hopefully is waking up more and more realizing that uh, there's a big rock that needs to be removed. A huge rock. And that's the rock that's covering over our hearts. If we had more, if we had more connection to our heart, if we had more access to what's going on inside our kishkas, I don't think we'd be able to continue to just working with our head, with our logic. Especially right now with what's going on down south, I can't differentiate between the two. It's right there. It's happening every single second. Even as we're talking right now, there was just another attack on a place called Orhaner Erez. It's nonstop. But the point is that Am Yisrael has to connect back to our name, Yisrael. That was Jacob's name. The Evan, the Link, the Av and the Ben were part of a bigger picture. Anyone that's been able to do anything monumental for Am Yisrael has kept their head afloat. They've kept their head up. And we need to lift up our heads again and remember that the world quite often presents before us massive rocks and boulders that basically block our way from understanding what's important in life. The reservoirs of Torah, of depth, of explanation, of how to get deeper in this world, are waiting for today's Jacob, today's young Yaakov, to get up and rise to the occasion and saying, in the name of love, my soulmate Rachel, the Shechina, is standing right here. I must remove whatever is in my way. Don't second, self, second guess yourselves, friends. We have the koach to do the impossible. We have the koach to do the impossible. I feel as though quite often we're just sitting out there, not like Yaakov, God forbid, like his twin brother. But if we feel that we have Yaakov inside of us, the enemies, this, these, these, new, these rats that are sitting in Gaza are nothing. They will become nothing when we become Yaakov. And it's time we woke up. 
It's time we lifted off that boulder that's sitting so heavily upon southern Israel. And it's really sitting upon all of us. But Bezrat Hashem in the schut of this parasha, in the schut of Yaakov Avinu going for it, finding his love, connecting to the wells, continuing his father's tradition, Avin Ben, we too will be able to show a parashat Vayetze before our father Yaakov and Shemaim, and he'll say to us, you do give me nachas. You do give me pride. I bless us all with the Shabbos of peace. By the time you're all listening to this episode, I pray that the evil, evil, evil leadership of Gaza and the evil people that are there shall all be removed and obliterated, Bezrat Hashem. Amen. And that all of us should have the most peaceful, peaceful Shabbos here in Eretz Yisrael. Amen. One of the rockets fell right by the house. Josh Haston here, host of Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Tune into my show this week for an exclusive interview with Rabbi Dov Fendel, the head of the Hesder Yeshiva in the town of Sterot. Just over the weekend, over 200 rockets and projectiles fired at southern Israel. The Palestinians are trying their best to make this place into a ghost town. We're not going to let them. They're trying to break our spirit. They don't realize it's invincible, unbreakable thousands of years old. Hear that interview and all the latest news, Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Don't miss the show.